Maybe that's a UFO watching us. My money's on the moon, but it might or be. Or maybe moon. a smudge on the camera. Nah. Fire! What's going on Coyote Pack and welcome back to Base Camp, another episode where we're not actually on a campsite, but we tell you guys how we made episodes on the Brave Wilderness channel. Mark, you ready to go? I am, but aren't we actually gonna do a campsite at some point this summer? You told me we could go camping. We'll see, we'll see. Maybe we'll do a Base Camp episode from out in the wild. Mario, what do you think about that? Oh man, that'd be fantastic. Maybe we could make some s'mores? Ooh, I like treats. I think a s'mores episode could be in the near future, but first, we're gonna hang out here in Columbus, Ohio and bring you guys another one of these episodes, which as you know, come out at the beginning of the month. Now, before we jump into this week's episode, first, let's look at some Coyote Pack fan art. I've got some awesome pieces here. Ooh. Check this out. I remember these. Yeah. Nice. Those are like those little plastic beads that you lay out on the design and then you put a wax paper over an iron and it all sticks together. Now, are you, do you use an iron or, I think I, my mom put them in the oven. In the when oven? I was a kid, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't played with these in a very long time. I think my mom ironed them. Mario, did you play with these as a kid? Nope. I played with Legos. Legos. Okay, well, <laughs> you probably don't want to try to melt your Legos, but this is awesome. We actually got this while on the Midwest tour. I believe one of the Coyote Pack fans gave it to us in, I think it was Michigan that we got it, and it traveled with us on the tour bus. It is absolutely phenomenal, and it's definitely gonna hang up here on the base camp wall. Man, that's totally awesome. Totally love that, that one. It actually looks like, you know, some of you out there might not know what the original Nintendo video games look like, but to me, that could be like the logo for a Brave Olders video game right there. Yeah, totally. It looks, looks a little bit like Minecraft style. Yeah. You know, like with that Ooh. kind of pixelation. We should yeah. make a video game. For a brave, brave wilderness Minecraft. Yeah. All right, our next picture comes from Emma Snyder. I love this. She hand drew this and even framed it. Whoa, spare no expense. Well, she wanted to make sure it ended up <laughs> on the base camp wall. And without question, this one is ready to go. I love this. It's a picture of a coyote and it even has a scar on its ear. Emma, thank you so much for this picture. It is definitely also going to hang on the base. I thought you wall. framed this. No, she framed it. That's really well done. Yeah. Man, that is nice. Legit, quality, right? That is some quality art right there. Mm -hmm. Certainly is. Awesome. Guys, keep sending in that Coyote Pack fan art. The P.O. box is in the about section of this video. The post office keeps telling us, guys, you can't have this much mail sent here because our box keeps filling up. And then they put it in one of those white bins on the side, but we don't care. We love the fan mail. We're doing our best to sort through all of it. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of letters that are actually filling up my office right now. My Which mind. is amazing. Yeah, so we've looked at the harvester ants, we've looked at the fire ants, but now it's time to look at the infamous cow killer. Ooh. Our most watched video ever, actually, on YouTube for sure it's the most watched like video. Like 40 million views at this point? Yeah, lots wow. of views. I know I'm ready, I know you guys are ready, and if you two are ready, let's dive back into the deserts of the Southwest and get me up close with the cow killer. Here we go. I'm Coyote Peterson. Now you've seen me stung by harvester ants, fire ants. This is really like the beginning of it. This was like the first major sting on the insect sting pain edits. Everything else had been lower on the charts, you know, ones and twos. Right. By the cow killer. Man, I have a feeling it was hot that morning. Yeah, it was. Brought me right back to that scene in the desert. Whew. And this is where we stinger. thought that maybe it would just sting me in the capsule. We'll get to that in a second, but this was a, a great suspenseful buildup. Look at the legs going. Yeah. I haven't seen this video in over a year. I don't think I've seen this video since I edited it. Edited it. Edited, 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 edited it. it. That's a, like a run on right there. <laughs> There's no question about it. The Wild West I is remember that wash. Rugged. And whether you're talking about the rocky terrain. Yeah, what's funny is that we, we plan to find a velvet ant. I mean, they're all over. This is a very common, common insect species. Mm -hmm. You just kind of have to be in the right place at the right time to stumble sure, upon them. They're, they're fairly nomadic, moving yeah. from spot to spot. We've seen them in other places, too. We've mm -hmm. seen them in Texas before. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we've seen them in, in, the, like, in Florida. Florida. Yep. Yeah, so they're not only found in Arizona. Right. It's best to avoid human interaction. See, this was not intending to look for a velvet ant and just finding one. We were shooting random B-roll shots and then it's like, boom, you snap right into a scene the moment that the opportunity presents itself. It's like, all right, 
We knew if we found a Velvet Ant on this trip to Arizona that we were gonna try to film this episode, but we had no idea when or where we would stumble upon one of these insects. Yes, yes, look at that, Woo! <laughs> Yeah, no one's ever been more excited to catch an insect that was then going to sting them. It is a big one. That is one of the larger Velvet Ants I've ever seen. Sometimes they're real small. Yeah, there's different species. There's like 3,000 different species worldwide. Mm -hmm. Cool. The velvet ant, which is actually a species of ground wasp. Oh, not an stop right there. All. Ground wasp. Right. I thought you said it was a velvet ant. Ah, misleading, huh? So that's a common name that mm -hmm. a lot of people give this animal, but it's actually a solitary wasp, right? Right. A wingless wasp. At yeah. least the females are wingless. Yeah, the females are wingless. They're bigger. And the males actually have wings and they cannot sting. Really? We haven't seen, I have at least have not seen a photo or in person a male velvet ant. Let's put up a photo. This is interesting. Mm. There you go. So that's so, okay. a male velvet ant. Yeah, you can see that they actually have wings and right. they're a little bit smaller mm -hmm. than the females. So you would never call that an ant, but the female version, clearly Which, the way they move, I yeah. can see why people call it an ant. It mm -hmm. makes sense. I mean, they're just constantly scurrying around. They're very erratic and they, they're just always moving. Um, and of course, the female velvet ants or solitary wasps, they have one of the longest stings in the insect kingdom. Stingers. Stingers. Yes. Stingers. Yes. We'll get into that in a second. Yeah. yeah. I know, right? Here we go again. And this was the Maybe first time we actually introduced the set, this if you will, the sting different. set, where mm -hmm. we had a table, bites, we had, pitches, you know, the uh, the vessel that you kept the uh, the specimen in. Yep. Uh, this is the first time you've used your forceps. Yep. Uh, all of these things uh, we sort of came up with on the fly but ended up being the staple of like how we continued on the insect sting painted decks videos. Right, this sort of became the quintessential kit for how to get stung by these insects for me. All the pieces, parts that I'd use, and you know, it ended up being pretty effective. But what we, we tried first with the velvet ant specifically is pretty interesting, you'll see here in a minute, where I just tried to put the capsule on my arm with the velvet ant to see if it would just sting naturally, which we'll get to that in a second. And show you guys just how big that stinger is. You ready for this? Are they delicate? Um, they are not I still remember going on Amazon very, very looking for that uh, glass capsule right. with the base. And I remember when we, we found these, we're like, that's it. That's perfect. That's right what we're looking for. Oh. So when Mark asked you if they're delicate, you said no. They're, yeah. they're actually notorious for being like little armored tanks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Their exoskeleton is super, super like rigid and right. tough. Well, yeah. that's how most people end up getting stung by them because they step on them and they don't get squished but they turn their bodies around and then whoosh, yeah. they sting you. Oftentimes people are, walk around barefoot. Um, I know a lot of times in Texas, because there's a lot of grass in Texas, in areas in Texas, and of course it feels good to walk around barefoot in the grass, but the velvet ants love to hide in the grass. So you step on one, get stung in between your toes. You know how soft the skin is between your toes. Yeah. Woo, not yeah. the place you want to get stung by a cow killer. It's great these uh, macro shots because you could actually Ooh. visualize that it is a wasp yeah. and not that an stinger. Ant. Let's see if we can get a, a freeze frame of that. Ooh, oh yeah. man. Yeah. You can. So a stinger is a modified what? It's actually how they deposit eggs. Right, an yeah. ovipostor exactly. is what it is. Yeah. All Females. stingers are modified ovipostors. And the velvet ant has the longest stinger out of any insect in the world, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Is it, now, is it the longest stinger compared to its body size? Or is it just the longest stinger size. period? Yeah, yes. in, in okay. proportion to its yeah. body. Although, I don't know something that has a longer stinger, do you? Uh, not sure. At least I have not been stung by something with a longer stinger. Mm -hmm. But certainly is. it's proportioned to, to their body size. Yeah. I mean, their stinger is curved, so it actually will come into their abdomen and mm -hmm. curve into their abdomen. Right, at this point, the velvet ant wouldn't know any difference between the basin of this little capsule, the little wooden capsule, and my arm. So in this sense, like I thought, all right, maybe it would be angry if I flipped it over. It's like, ooh, let me just sting it whatever I can. But they don't just arbitrarily sting unless they feel constrained and they need to get away. So for us, this was a good moment of experimentation to find out, well, how am I going to induce a sting from some of these creatures? We were genuinely expecting you to be stung right here. Right. Like, I remember filming this being like, all right. It's See, gonna, right there too, I was like, oh, it's gonna sting me. Yeah. And I'm in, I'm in much less control here. It's actually, it was, I was actually more nervous. Uh, See that? Yeah. Like it looks, it's trying to actually burrow underneath there as compared to stinging me. But when it would sort of rear its abdomen like that, I was expecting that the sting was gonna happen. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was kind of biting at my arm. Great, great example for sure. Like mm -hmm. these often misunderstood creatures that you know they're monsters are going to kill a cow now. Yeah, it takes. It, they got to be provoked. All I wanted to do was get away. Yeah. This is intense. My arm actually started getting pretty hot inside of the. You'll, you'll see the the moisture, the steam, yeah. the steam from my skin. Which is holding the velvet ant with. That's yeah, funny. That's that's a something that wasn't anticipated. Right. You know. So now you have a foggy thing. You can't get the good shot. You right. Know, so how are we gonna work around well, that? Well, you know, obviously we we cut ahead of this process. Mm -hmm. This whole process actually was a lot longer in right. real time. I probably kept that on my arm for what? Maybe maybe a solid five minutes. But we weren't yeah. gonna make you guys sit there and watch five minutes of the ant running around in circles on my arm. So this was like, okay, let's reset. Now I knew for sure right, that this thing that was going to happen. With this is for me to hold the ant with the entomology forceps up against my skin and let it sting me. Now, now it becomes real. And this is the first time that I'd, I'd ever done that. You know, this is the, the first creature that I've ever had to just like hold in place to induce a sting. So there's this real fine line of like, you know, building up your nerves and being like, all right, am I gonna actually go through with it? It actually became easier as we went on by the time we got to bullet ant and then the centipede. I mean, it's still easier tough. Easier in terms of how you positioned it or? Well, no, just knowing like, okay, a sting is going to happen. Yeah. Without knowing it first, it's, it's pretty We didn't know the process yet. This was the very first experimentation with this whole like, yeah. Table forceps yeah. vessel yeah. kind of situation. Yeah. You can see them all squirming. The anticipation yeah. is always uh, yeah. is always and it was hot. Gonna get you. It was super hot this day. It mm -hmm. was like well over 100 degrees at this. And point. it's early in the morning. It's only about nine yeah. nine thirty. But it was 100 right for sure. Yeah, like it was hot. You see, my hand is shaking. All right, here we go. Here you go, ready? All right, let's do this again one more time for good measure. I'm Caddy Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the cow killer. Are you ready? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, see, it's angry. You're holding on to it, and it's, it's looking for something to sting so that it's let go of, and then it can escape. Yep. Two, three, you good? Just real quick, is that the moon? Uh, I think it's a UFO. Is it? It's something up there. Yeah, Just kept, I just noticed that. I was like, what is that? Dust There's a the lot of UFOs there. in Arizona, guys, like legit. Like people see all sorts of weird things in the sky and, and maybe that's a UFO watching us. My money's on the moon, but it might or be. Or maybe a smudge on the camera. No. 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 Not a, but that's the yeah. GoPro. That's GoPro camera. Yeah. You never know. Are we ever going to maybe do a UFO segment or a alien segment? I don't know. You know, if aliens cool. come down and we can film an episode with them, I'm sure it'll be really popular. But right now, all let's right. get back into the sting. Back to the sting. Can't cut it right in the anticipation. You need to see my hand shaking there. Yep. Look at my arm shaking. And Must take a lot of nerves to put the animal it, on you. Like it didn't that, happen yeah. right away. You see, like, oh, the stinger oh. comes out, it's feeling, and then it caught me at exactly the right angle. It's like, it's like looking there. for purchase. Look at that thing. So flexible. <laughs> Bam. It's like... Pause it for a second. Pause it for a second. That stinger is so thin and so... Fine. It's almost like a hair. It's like it caught like the perfect angle. I can actually feel it go in under my skin. Almost like if you ever stuck yourself with a needle or something like that, mm -hmm. you could feel it go whoosh, whoosh, and in and out. And Does not feel good. <laughs> Should we get back to the moment of excitement? Let's here? let's All see right. what happens. This is the fun part for the viewers. Okay, let me get back so, here. Was it immediate? It was the the sting shot me back and I got the velvet in inside the capsule. It was a slower onset than some of them. Definitely slower onset than like the tarantula hawk. Wait, wait, wait. Was this the first time that you asked him, are you okay? Yeah. Oh, did you ask that? Back it up. Did I think he said, are you all right? <laughs> Is it there? This might be Mark's first. Uh... Okay, we get back here. Are you yeah, right? we, all right. <laughs> we just transcended to you, okay? Yeah, L let me address and that that's, real quick. And that's how the meme started. Let me address this real <laughs> yeah, quick. Yeah, okay. so, the famous meme, it's even a t-shirt. So clearly, we know, or at least I know, that in these situations, of course you're in pain. You're not just okay. But what I'm really meaning to ask you is, are you in trouble? Do right. I need to be concerned in this situation? Like, should I call medical professionals to come out here or not? Right. So when I'm asking okay, it's not like, hey, are you okay? Like, oh, I'm hanging out and I'm okay. It's like, 
do we need to be concerned? I know you're in pain, but how concerned should I be? Yeah, like, Coyote Are You OK <laughs> t-shirts available right now in the Brave Wilderness store. For real, like For real. I see people that, wearing them really all that. the time. That's one you can actually buy. All right, let's keep going. Oh wow, oh wow, okay. It was a searing pain. It, it, it really built, almost like, you ever eat like a habanero was, pepper or uh, like Mario a jalapeno doesn't. pepper? Well, you know, if you guys have ever eaten a really hot pepper before, you bite into it and it's there, mm -hmm. and the, it, the pain grows, the intensity grows. Yeah. That was definitely the case with the velvet ant. The intensity grew where it was getting hotter and hotter, especially in the sting zone. As that venom started to radiate out, you could feel it getting hotter sure. and hotter. And that's certainly the venom breaking down into your system. Yep. So how much is this physical pain versus like anxiety about how bad it might get? Uh, I'd say it's like a 75-25. Like mm -hmm. 25 being the anxiety and, and 75 yeah. being the actual pain. You know, I could see that there are certain responses to this that are like, yeah, it hurts, but I'm also seeing a lot of this looks like you're nervous mm -hmm. about what's occurring to you. I certainly at this point, because this was at, at, at this juncture in my life, the most dangerous thing I'd ever been stung by. The little fire ants and the harvester ants, that was more just like enduring the pain and not really, I don't want to say not respecting the power of those insects, but being like, oh, these things are so little. But then you see the stinger on the velvet ant, and you're like, ooh, that's that's pretty legit right there. I think the the lure of, of the cow killer gets yeah. to you mentally. Absolutely. And the lure of the bullet ant, the lure of, so, so these things will actually physically, or mentally make you physically feel. Right. And anxiety. with Justin Schmidt's Insect Sting Pain Index, where it's ranked as the fourth most painful sting in the world. So there you can got see. got twice. See that? One, two. Uh, I think the part of it was from the first time that stinger came out and yeah, like where, where, where it was like sort of. So maybe this Might first one here was like a, just a residual yeah, sting. Yeah, that's definitely where the, the more like whoosh, full on sting happened. You can see your veins are really starting to pop up mm -hmm. out of the skin there. That's yeah, crazy. And, the, and the red coloration, it only gets worse. It's radiating. It is radiating. It feels like, um, you know, if you get a charge, there's the EpiPen. And it like seizes we had the satellite phone ready. I remember, man, we, we, we took every precaution. And yeah. just, I think that's a good point to make. When we do these, we take every precaution possible to keep you out of harm's way and to have an emergency uh, response situation at the ready, just in case. You right. never know. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually, when we filmed this, we weren't too far away from our vehicle either. No. So just in case we had yeah. to throw you in the car and get to the hospital. Right. I think I took the vehicle. I was out. You took? And the sat phone. No, sorry. <laughs> There's some intense pain right there. How long has it been? About, about seven minutes. Seven minutes. Now they say this, the pain from this lasts for about 30. Uh, about 23 minutes to go, guys. 23 minutes to go. Ah! I always find that if you walk around after you've been stung by something, you shake your arm, you keep moving, you feel the pain a lot less. I think it just takes your mind off it. Like, I would pace a lot. Uh, after I was bitten by the giant desert centipede, I could never get it to stop it. Yeah, there you go. Back that up, pause that on my arm real quick. You can see, like, all the... Right there? No, not that one. Further, further, right there. further. Keep going, keep going. All right. Right there. You could see all the, the blotchiness, which was really strange. I, however, my skin and flesh reacted to the venom became that really big, red, blotchy It almost looks mark. like a rug burn. Yeah. Something. Yeah. And at this point, you were kind of out of the woods as far as any kind of am yeah. anaphylactic shock or any kind of adverse reaction that we really need to be concerned about. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's still on fire. And what's crazy is that Look at all the red blotching that's formed around. We just talked all about that. Yeah. <laughs> There's the stinger insertion point right there, and it is swollen and it is very tender. And you can see how red the entire radius is of the sting. It looks like a huge bruise on my arm. You can, it, from certain shots, based on the exposure of the camera and the light and certain angles, you can yeah. see it better at certain angles yeah. than you could others. Different, different cameras have a different look to yeah. this. Yeah, and sometimes the camera doesn't do it justice at all. Really, it doesn't. You really can't see the effects. 
Certainly you have to have your arm positioned at the right angle to really see how much swelling has happened. You can kind of see there as you push on it how much like liquid ended up being underneath my skin. And the other thing that we never caught on camera is how much it actually itched after the fact. About 24 hours after it was really, really itchy, which I find with most stings, there's this aftermath of itching that we, we don't ever end up going back and, and filming. In the insect kingdom. How long did that sting last as far as like the residual swelling? The velvet ant, I'd say 24 hours. 24, 24 hours. hours. And then the itching, so we keep getting red every time I would itch it, but um, I think it was like two or three days after we did this that we ended up filming the tarantula hawk. <laughs> back to back. Yeah, back to back. That was a rough one. Oh, there it is. So much more intimidating, you know? Yeah. That's a cool insect. For sure. Though, man. And definitely. Even though that stinger is going to be a lot bigger than the right. rabbit ant. In, sure. Engage. In, the engage, engage exactly. is, is much in thicker than, yeah. yeah. There she goes. So this is where we release it. This is how we got all the B-roll shots, actually, after we filmed the episode. You see light is a little bit lower in the sky. We kept the velvet ant throughout the course of the day, let it go when the temperatures were a little bit cooler, and now yeah, because it would be fine. In the, in the middle of the day, in the desert, you, you can't film. Yeah, it's, it's way so, too hot. It's so hot. Not only for us, like literally, the cameras will overheat, and they won't. Work, they literally won't record, mm -hmm. and then it's really bad for the animals. So when we're in the desert, we try to always film first thing in the morning, and then right as the sun's about to set. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that kind of does it. And wraps it up. So when are we, when are we doing uh, the tarantula hawk? Uh, well, tarantula hawk obviously will come out before the bullet ant, but why don't you guys tell us in the comment section below maybe what some of the other episodes are that you want to see that aren't the sting ones. Hmm. Everybody always wants the stings and the bites. I mean, we could go back. You see there, you've got the, the leaf cutter leaf ant. Cutter that was ants. an extremely bloody episode. Maybe we'll revisit that one. But you guys tell us what you want to see, um, and we'll focus in on that for a future base camp. But yeah. we will definitely do the tarantula hawk. Right? Absolutely. Good. You guys tell us in the comments section what you want to see. Keep sending in that artwork coyote pack. And as for me, Mark, Mario, Coyote. I guess this is where we do an outro. Right? <laughs> I don't know no, where you're going. going. I don't know. I didn't really have anything else to say. Tell us what you want to see. Send us in artwork. Time for the outro, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Mark Vins. I'm Mario Nicola. Be brave. Stay, Stay wild. wild. We'll see you on the next Base Camp Adventure. That was a clunky outro. <laughs> but the artwork's good. The climb up the insect sting pain index continues. If you missed my painful encounter with the cow killer, make sure to go back and watch the most famous episode on the Brave Wilderness channel. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure.